You're listening to Radio MD. She's a chiropractic, holistic physician, best selling author, international speaker, entrepreneur, and talk show host. She's Dr. Suzanne Bennett. It's time now for Wellness for Life Radio. Here's Dr. Suzanne. 18 years ago, when my son Cody was two years old, he had severe mold allergies so terribly that we had to carry an EpiPen. An EpiPen 24-7, this is a medical injectable device to use just in case he had an anaphylactic reaction from eating anything contaminated with mold. You know, I didn't know, and my pediatrician, his pediatrician, didn't know much about molds and fungi allergies and how toxic it can be to the human body. Today on Nature Secrets, we are going to discuss the fungus among us, whether it's inside our body or outside, and how we can rid of it naturally. Now, molds are just one type of fungi and it is different from plants, animals, and bacteria. Molds are eukaryotic microorganisms that are decomposers of dead organic materials such as leaves, wood, plants, and even dead animals. And they are absolutely essential for the health of our earth ecosystem. But we just don't want them invading our bodies, food, and living environment. For people with general mold sensitivities, it can trigger irritating immune responses such as hay fever symptoms, allergic rhinitis, and coughing issues. Now, for people with severe allergy symptoms uh, or compromised immune systems, mold can cause chronic inflammation and more significant issues such as asthma, anaphylactic reactions, bronchial fungal infections, chronic fatigue, and even irritable bowel symptoms. Some ingested molds um, of aspergillus and fusarium species can be very dangerous because it is actually, it produces this a potential toxic substance called mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are the toxins some mold excrete to help fight off other molds and microbes like bacteria. You probably know a lot about penicillin because that's actually a mycotoxin because we know that from penicillin molds, we were able to many, many years ago find that it is what kills bacteria in our body. And now, of course, we use that as an antibiotic uh, substance. But If we eat molds and mycotoxins, it can cause severe GI upset. It can also damage the intestinal lining, causing leaky gut. It can wipe out the liver function and enough that it actually causes liver failure. And long-term exposure to mycotoxins, such as aflatoxins, can cause liver cancer. This is well, well known. So it's also mycotoxins are poisonous. Poisonous uh, neurotoxins, meaning they can damage your central nervous system, causing inflammation and irritation. Really scary when you really think about you know what's found um, in our foods, the foods that we eat, such as nuts, grain crops, such as corn, rice, and wheat, you know, foods that we have every single day on our our, our uh, plate. So where else can you find it? Celery, potatoes, apples, peppers, and other produce. Of course, produce that's not good and it's old, definitely that mold has set in. And that uh, they are finding that 25% of the world's crops could be affected by myco- mycotoxins, particularly called aflatoxin. So aflatoxin grows on peanuts and grains, particularly uh, called corn. Corn is really toxic. You know how you find that on the when you open up that fresh looking corn, you open it up and right there under that silky stuff is black mold, brown mold, yucky mold. That is all could be um, uh, mold that produces aflatoxin. So you really want to stay away from that. Did you also know that aflatoxins found in milk, cow's milk? Yes, and you know why? Because the cow is eating the grains, the grains that that actually are contaminated by mold. So really important to watch out for the dairy products that we have. So what else? What else do we have? Blue cheese, blue cheese. That's Roquefort cheese. Penicillin Roqueforti is actually what's growing in blue cheese. All types of cheese actually grows mold. You could tell because as soon as you take it out of the refrigerator, often there's this green and blue grown all over it. So you got to be careful with that. Also, salami. You know the outer covering on salamis, often they kind of like whitish stuff. Well, that's mold as well. And alcohol, alcohol. We love to drink alcohol when we're out with friends and family, and, but that's a mycotoxin itself. Fermentation with sugar, as well as grain and and fruit juice, right? That is all what makes alcohol. All that fermentation. So really important to stay away from that. If you've got mold allergies, other risky foods, uh, mushrooms. 
that obviously comes from a fungi, dried fruits, restaurant salads, restaurant greens, freshly squeezed fruit and veggie juice that's packaged in foods as well, and crackers and chips, they all have um, can harbor mold, and then of course nuts such as peanuts, cashews, pistachios, they're really, really high in mold growth. Now, every week, I'd say three to five patients a week, I get patients who complain about stomach upset because of food poisoning. Why? They've eaten a big salad, trying to be healthy, and they eat it out at a restaurant. And out at a restaurant, what they don't do is they don't wash the veggies. They don't wash the greens. They literally take the, it out of the bag and they put it on your plate and put all that, that dressing on so you can't taste it, right? Because often you can taste what fungus and mold tastes like and it's so uh, disgusting. But what we want to do is this. I recommend people do not eat veg uh, salads outside of, a, in, of your home, in restaurants. You want to be able to, you know, eat cooked veggies. Ask for just steamed cooked veggies. You can even ask them to cook your arugula. So instead of arugula salad, have steamed or sauteed arugula, just like spinach, you know? And if you're really jonesing for fresh greens, then go home and make sure that you uh, um, clean it properly. And I'm gonna teach you in one minute how you can eat mold-free salads at home. Other tips that I want to talk about is that, you know what, when you're at the store, make sure you look at the, the, desk, the best buy dates, you know, and make sure that before you put in the shopping cart, read what you're buying. Make sure it's, it's, you know, way before the date because it takes days and days and it'll start to harbor mold otherwise. Don't sniff. You know, often we pick something, we sniff it. Well, you know, on an orange, all that whitish film, well, on an orange, that whitish film, that's mold that naturally grows on that. So don't sniff because the mold spores can go right into your nose and then, of course, uh, you end up having to have sinus infections from that. Store things that are recommend at the right recommended temperature. Don't leave things out because often if you leave things out like bread and stuff like that, of course, gluten-free bread, it will go moldy in a jiffy. And don't overbuy uh, produce. You know, get whatever you eat. I go to the store twice a week. And then what I do is I literally uh, clean all my produce with what? Vitamin C crystals. And this is how you're gonna be able to have great greens, free of mold, and of course, not have any damaging um, toxins in your gut. So what do you do? I use vitamin C crystals. You soak, you just put about half of a teaspoon, you soak your veggies, wash your veggies, as well as other kinds of fruit that you can't peel, like berries and grapes, as well as grains such as brown rice, um, oatmeal, uh, quinoa, amaranth, what I do is I soak them in a glass container and then you just put half a teaspoon of vitamin C for 15 minutes. And what that does is it cleans off all of the greens and the berries, all of the mold and debris, as well as even bacteria, and sometimes even little bugs. It'll clean it right off. And then of course, because vitamin C is a super antioxidant, it will neutralize pesticides and in any kind of fertilizers that may be on, on your produce. Remember, or even organic produce can have other kinds of stuff coming from other farms and whatnot, and of course, little bugs there too. And sometimes even even organic can actually have more fungi because they don't use fungicides on the, the veggies. Make sure you get ascorbic acid, not the bu buffered kind, not ester C, and get the one that's corn free so that you don't deal with uh, GMO, you know, genetically modified uh, corn. A lot of the vitamin C's are made with GMO, but if you have trouble finding it, you can go to drsuzanne.com slash crystals, drsuzanne.com forward slash crystals. And, and you know, finally, if there's any spot of mold in your fruits, let's say in a, in a box of berries, throw that whole berry box out. It's not worth it because, because mold you cannot see and it just goes everywhere. It's really important that you don't end up eating it. So important. Wow, this is a lot of information. I'm so glad that we talked about all this. You know, once you make your changes, you'll see how much better you feel inside and out. This is Dr. Suzanne. Thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to serve you. I am dedicated to helping you feel your best today. This is Wellness for Life Radio on Radio MD. See you next time. Stay well.